Hello, my name's Ryan Weber, and today on Build It, we are going to build a digital chameleon. What is a digital chameleon, you say? Well, a digital chameleon is a moving sprite or video component that is changing its color automatically based on the video content located behind it. I can show you that quickly here. I have a small little chameleon sprite that is moving around on this color swatch and automatically changing its color to match that of the background. Here we can look at something a little more complicated. So quite a few of these moving around on their own and each of them are changing color to to match whatever's in the background. Okay, so we're gonna build that. To get started, we might as well drop our background color in. I'm gonna open up the side panel so we can uh, have a stage preview this whole time. I'm gonna add a stage preview here. Uh, just make it, you know, something like this so that we get an idea of what we're looking at. Keep aspect ratio, I'll just turn it off so it fills. Uh, so there's our background. On top of that, we might as well drop a lizard. And uh, you can see that the lizard is automatically scaling to fit the same window size. I can switch, you know, and skew it. We'll keep the aspect ratio on at this point. Um, so we have these two elements. And actually, I don't want to be... Uh, warping or changing the aspect ratio of the background, so I'm gonna switch that back to off. We'll have these black bars. We will be adjusting that ourselves shortly. Uh, and that will actually be maybe the first thing we do. Uh, let's take a uh, get stage size actor to uh, get the stage size, and boom, right away I see that I'm looking at my 4K screen, which I don't wanna be. So uh, control two, I open up stage setup. I'm gonna switch it over to uh, looking at my default screen, which is normal HD. Boom, we get colors back or the size back to what we want. And I'm going to add a scaler just to scale this still image to the stage size so that I know that it fills it uh, nicely. I'm going to Drop that in there, connect that up like that, and now it is uh, now it's scaling to 1920 by 1080 to our background without any um, aspect ratio changing or anything. And what that means is uh, we have uh, a video feed that is already set to that size and already fitting the background correctly uh, that we can then use to. Uh, cause the overlaying lizards to change the correct corresponding color behind them. All right. Let me see. Boom. Yeah, so the heart of this project really is the measure color actor. This measure color actor is what's going to uh, look around at that background video stream that we're putting into it at a corresponding horizontal and vertical location and give us the the color of that spot. So just to briefly show that in action, I'll connect that up. And now you can see that its width and height are the entire video image. So what it's doing is it's looking at the, this color swatch, all of it and averaging it out so you can see that the average of all of that is kind of this muddy grayish tone because we have a, with such a wide variety. If we change the width to uh, something small, uh, 1%, and the height to 1%, now we're looking at this tiny little pixel spot that we can move its location. I'll move it somewhere into the middle of the video. Now you can see I'm looking at something that's kind of blue and it looks like I'm landing on this uh, left side blue tone because you can see the color that's coming out is this blue, right? If I move a little bit to the, um, the right of that, it turns purple and then orange, right? Below, I get, oh, sorry, that was above, I get green 
below I get uh, plum purple. So you can see moving around I get the different colors uh, that are found inside this uh, checkerboard type video screen. Okay, so what we need to be able to do now is move our lizard around in a corresponding manner to the location that we're picking a color from. Yes, the way I like to do it is using the mat plus plus actor. Um, and the reason for that is quite simple. Quite simply that all it takes is a foreground and a background. Connect up that again. And what we see is an output doesn't look quite right yet, right? We have the color coming in. We want alpha transparency on. Oh, look at that. Now we have a, a lizard over top of a colored background. And foreground color scaling, we want to turn that off. So now the lizard is no longer being scaled to fit. It's sitting at its normal size. So you can see it's quite small. It's only 150 pixels by 150 pixels, this lizard. And it's sitting at its natural size on top of the uh, 1920 by 1080 background at this point. So those two settings, you need to switch to get the Mat++ actor to work in such a way that you can move around a, a transparent sprite, if you were, on top of a background. So that's all great and everything. Our, our lizard is now located at a source horizontal. Oh, is that? No, that's that actually is not the input we want to use. We want to use destination horizontal position, right? So where on the horizontal, uh, where on the destination image do we want to put it? And you can see that starts from a zero zero pr point, whereas the measure color zero zero is in the top left corner. So you can see that little dot. So I'll move that. Maybe I'll make that area a little larger just so we can see it a little more easily. There we go, a little square up in that corner. So what that means is that if we are going to be moving these, these things around, uh, we're going to need to be able to scale this position, right? So like a lot of things in Isadora, the far left is negative uh, 50 and the far right is positive 50. So we know our range and what we can do um, is for simplicity state sake, I'm going to scale a range of zero to 100 as an input to the output values. So uh, that's all positive numbers. And I, what I can do is use an absolute value actor as a placeholder for that because nothing will ever be negative. And what this allows me to do quite easily is say that this will be the horizontal and this will be the vertical. These ones don't need to scale because it's a range of 0 to 100. And I'm going to even define this as a scale to 0 to 100 as the input just to make so that I can't enter anything incorrect. Uh, so now you can see, you know, I can move that block and the measure color around left to right, top to bottom. And I'm going to limit scale value uh, these two values again. 0 to 100 is our incoming. We want them to be 0 to fi uh, negative 50, 50, negative 50 to 50 as our output. And I'm just going to run those in like that. Then connect them up to our destination horizontal and our destination vertical. Now when I run this across, you can see that uh, when I needed both inputs to actually have active uh, values coming through so that everything was updated. But now that the lizard is in the top area here over top of green, we are seeing a green output. And as we move that lizard across into yellow, we see yellow input. Down into orange, down into red. Uh, so what you, what you see now is that we basically have a pretty reasonable uh, purple. Yeah, we have the color 
located directly behind the lizard being uh, looked at and the color values being spit out by the measure color actor now. Right? So the only thing we really need to do now is use this color that is being picked to change the color of our grayscale lizard. What we'll do to start is the simplest sort of starting point that I can think of. And that will be the uh, colorizer. The colorizer actor takes an RGB input and adjusts that. So now if you see the lizard down here is gray, if I boost, he's now largely red. I can take away all the other color and now he's solidly red, right? So that's quite good. And what we can do uh, to make this a little easier to work with, because we're going to have to get RGB values, and we could we could take them directly out of here, and maybe that's more efficient. But it's three different connections, and I need to do some scaling. So I'm going to take a uh, color to RGBA actor, so that I only have to feed one color across and I can localize the work that I'm doing. Um, the color, a color value is not a very heavy data type to pass around, so it's got three colors into it. Unpacking it's not, not CPU intensive. I don't think that this is a, an issue, but you could get rid of this actor if you really wanted to. Um, I kind of like it at the moment because it's going to make my scaling that I need to do here much easier. So RGB values range from 0 to 255 on this output and you can see that if you look here 0 to 255. Um, the colorize actor allows an input of negative 100 to 100 which means it can strip away all the color, add tons of color. Um, so to have a very dramatic effect we're going to want to scale that. Uh, we could do it within the, the built-in Isadora scaling but it, I prefer, particularly for these tutorials, to be able to see what we're doing. Actually, I'm going to set this right first. So we have an incoming value of 0 to 255. We want an output of 0, negative 100 to 100. I'm going to duplicate that twice so that I have three of these. I'm going to connect up my one value, two values, and three values. Right now, if I move this, we get different color values into there. That's great. Now we can connect these up in series to our RGB inputs. And again, if we move this guy across, now he's almost exactly the color of the background, which is pretty amazing, right? I find it's not quite as true when you get into the brighter colors, and that's got a little bit to do with the uh, the brightness and the contrast of the grayscale image. So when I played with this on my own, I added some um, hue saturation adjustment and contrast adjustment just to get some more interesting effects. Uh, that'll take a little longer than something you can maybe play with on your own. But for now, what we have is a, a pretty effective lizard. I'm going to get a little bigger here. I'm going to add some wave generators on to just get that lizard moving around in a you know, some sort of interesting manner. Let's move it kind of slowly and um, yeah, just change it up just a touch. Uh, and this is part of the reason I made these absolute values as the input as 0 to 100, just because it made things pretty easy for me. Now, you may or may not see that it changes color to to the corresponding block that is over quite well, but it also tends to change before it leaves the block. And that's because we're looking at a an area here with the width and the height of the entire background video. So we have a 1920 by 1080 input that we're looking at 20% of its width. So 20% of its width is fairly substantial, right? And 20% of its height is, again, a fairly big number, maybe bigger than these blocks. So you can imagine a pretty big square moving around with this lizard, and it's grabbing the background color. 
before the lizard actually gets to that area. So <clears throat> something I did just to illustrate this a little more clearly is um, this little piece that I just cut in from another patch. Uh, it basically takes the stage size, divides it, and then multiplies it by uh, whatever percentage input we want. So if at 20% inputs, we have a, um, a pixel area being looked at this 384 pixels wide and 216 pixels tall. And like I said, this lizard is approximately 150 pixels wide and tall. I think it's a little wider than it is tall, but pretty close to 150 square. And so we want, we want to have width and height values that keep it within the, the boundary of that. Uh, so I'm going to try 5% and 5%. You can see now I'm at 96 and 54. 96 is pretty good because that means that the lizard could cross over into another square just a little bit, maybe a third of its size before it starts shifting color, which I like. So I'm going to adjust the, uh, the height up so that I get a, rec a square shape. It's pretty close. So I will set my width to 5 and my height to 8.9. And that, that'll work for this lizard. And now if we look at this full screen, you can see that the lizard is basically changing color exactly over top of what it's moving into. And its color matching is incredibly good. It's dead on. It looks like it blends right into the background. Quite nice. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. And you can see that it's super easy to do. Now, let's say I'm going to duplicate my scene. And make it so that we can try to uh, bundle this into a user actor so that we can get this sort of effect where we have a bunch of lizards doing its, their own things moving around together. Um, and you'll see I do this in, in nearly every tutorial, so you'll start to get a sense of how easy this can be. But we look at the majority of our code or our patch here. I'm just going to make it so I can see everything. When we look at this, we see we have a picture player input. All right, so we can we have an input here. We have a background input from this. And we have an output, a video output. So it seems natural to me that if we select everything except for those inputs and outputs, I'm going to shrink down a little here, like select like this, then uh, deselect that and that, that I should be able to cut that, wrap it in a user actor, and make it modular. So I'll cut it. Create a user actor go into my user actor, paste what I have, and add those user inputs and outputs. User input is going to have to be over here. That is our background input. And did you background? Uh, then I'm going to go another user input. Where did that one go? That one came in and got color adjusted. That was our video in video in uh, sprite. I'm going to call it a sprite. And then we need a video output. User output. Boom. Connect. Oh, didn't want to for me. Video out is fine. Save and update all is fine. Now, when we look at this, um, this is an output I'll connect it to there. I'm just going to bring everything together a little closer so it's easier to see on the screen. <clears throat> this is our background. Bang. Oh. Why is that moving around on us? Okay. And then this is our foreground. Bang. Oh, look at that. So when we only have a background connected, 
the uh, and no foreground video source connected to the mat plus plus actor, it starts moving that uh, those x the horizontal and vertical positions in such a way that the entire background moves. So there's something to be careful of there. You want to be sure that you have both your background and your foreground as feeds into that mat plus plus actor. So this is pretty great, right? Like uh, this is cool. We now have a user actor that gives us the functionality of this lizard really quite quickly and is moving around and it's there and that's cool. I love it, right? But what if, uh, what if I want to have multiple? I want to have, I want to be able to get a bunch of these lizards happening. So normally what we would do is, uh, you know, do this and maybe we can uh, take this and feed that into there. And again, it's moving around funny because we don't have a background. And now we have two lizards moving around pretty easily. Alright, super simple. But what I, one thing I wanted to show you on this is that this daisy chaining sort of effect isn't necessary uh, in this user actor setup because the mat plus plus actor doesn't actually care what's coming into it. We just need it to be the same size as the area that we're looking at for the color. And what you'll see is here we have an output that has a background. And here we have a background, or we have an output that has a background. What I want to do is I want to switch this around so that we don't actually have the background here. I want to um, add a background color actor. I want to set its size to match the stage size or the canvas size, uh, depending on how you're working in this. And I want it to be fully transparent. So I switch that over to transparent. I'm just going to toggle these values so that I get an output, get a valid feed. Now I'm going to feed that clear background into my matte plus plus actor. And you can see what we're seeing here now is that there's, there's no background. And what we see on our video output is that we have this, this uh, lizard that's moving around, changing color because it still has the background feed coming in uh, from that checkerboard, but we're not using that background to output the video. So we have a completely clean uh, sprite floating on an alpha channel as at our output. So that's pretty cool. We'll save and update all. And we end up with this situation now that this one won't work because it, it actually needs the background image to know its color. And we can uh, do something like this. So the two of those, they do exist separately, but they're actually running now on top of each other because uh, their animation is exactly identical to one another. So uh, what we can do is add a pulse generator, two smoothers. I'm just going to change the way in which these are animating. so that we get a little bit more um, a little bit more diversity in the type of output that we're seeing uh, from these. And I'm going to add a random actor so that each instance of the user actor has a different number for its horizontal and vertical positions. And uh, if I feed that into, oh, I put it in the wrong spot. Yeah. If I feed that in, you can see we now get pretty active outputs for horizontal and vertical positions. And you can see now the lizards have separated from each other in the video output, and we can see that. <clears throat> Save it up by all. 
Yeah, and they're moving around separately from each other. They're going to do different things now. So you might be wondering, well, I, now I don't see the background and I can't tell if the lizard is actually being a chameleon and blending into the background. Well, that's because we've taken the background out of our user actor elements and made it so it only runs separately. So now if we want to add the background, we add it simply into the background here. We can make it dimmer. We can do different things. We can, uh, yeah. And because we know that we scaled it to match, I just changed the aspect, keep aspect ratio off because that uh, scales that image to fill the background again. So that's something you got to keep in mind is that if, you move, if you're separating the two like this, you really do want to make sure that either you scale it before you send it into the user actor, or if you're going to include that scaling inside the user actor, um, that you're aware that to match things up, you have to change those together. And I, really truthfully, uh, just to be slightly more efficient, um, I would say that we could, we could take away the scaling I'm going to copy that, delete that, and I'm going to add the scaling outside of it because um, by doing that, we only scale once. And if we create a whole bunch of these um, lizards now, you know, we start creating more of them that would have been four times the scaling, and I prefer to do one. So, you know, you gotta keep in mind what what things do you need within your user actors that each one requires, and what can you pull outside of it to optimize your patch by only running that piece of code once. So here, if we look inside our user actor, we each lizard needs to know its own color. Each lizard needs to be moved around within its space, which is what the mat plus plus actor is doing. Each lizard needs to have uh, needs to know where it's going to move to, right? And that's it. That's the bare minimum requirements for what this lizard is going to do. It's pretty simple in that um, it changes color. It moves around. And, and yeah, so it creates a canvas unto itself. Right, so great, I'll update that again just because I moved things. We should have four lizards now. Oh, no, it won't because we don't have background data for these two yet. So as soon as I drop that in, I put everything into the wrong spot. You see that? I put my background into the foreground uh, and things started acting really strangely because of it, which makes you know sense it was wrong. There, okay, that gets us our four. So we got four lizards, they're moving around. Okay, what else can we do to this to make it kind of fun? Well, previously uh, what I did is I looked at how things were moving and depending on how they were moving, I was uh, I started using the flip actor to flip the orientation of our lizard so that it doesn't look like it's going backwards at times. And when it goes, you know, when it's going down, it's facing down. When it's going up, it's facing up. Left, it's facing left. And right, it's facing right. So how do we do that? It's actually pretty easy. I put a uh, I'm going to put a flip actor directly in front of our colorization. And this needs to go inside the user actor because every lizard is going to flip its orientation individually. All right? So this isn't something we can optimize by pulling it out. This needs to be inside the uh, the actor. And what we need to do is we also need to look at these positions, these xy or the horizontal and vertical outputs that are moving this thing. Yeah, we're going to do a quick comparison between the most recent value and the last value. So to do that, I'm going to add a value delay line actor. Leave it at its default value of 1. 
Yeah, it's default value of one. I'm going to add another absolute. Well, I don't really need to. No, we can. Yeah, so we're going to need a value delay line actor. We're going to use that to get our previous value. We're going to use the value from our absolute values. And I'm just going to move these down so that I can build this together a little better. Just thinking through how to place the, all this stuff. And I'm going to reconnect this because I want some space. <clears throat> all right, that's looking pretty good. Move these over here. So we can, um, yeah. I'm going to connect that to there. That'll get us one value behind the previous behind that value, and duplicate that because we need it for both, right? And then what we're going to do is compare the most recent value to the previous value. So we need a compare comparator. Comparator. I'm going to move it on this side just to to make it pretty easy for me. I'm going to use uh, less than as my compare on one of these. And uh, we want it when it's on change. Yeah, so I'm simply just going to add this and add this. Because it's, it's either going to be uh, on or off, that's the value that we're essentially looking for here is this output of 0 or 1. Um, it's going to be pretty easy to get this. I don't even need to really think through <laughs> what I'm doing because if it's wrong, I just switch it to greater than. So it's either going to be less than or greater than as our comparator. And uh, we'll be able to tell whether or not these are working correctly. So I guess to route these, I'm going to bring this over like this. And then drop that into that's our horizontal yes so we've got to make sure that the value that is running to our horizontals comes to our horizontal flip and similarly the uh, the value that's going to our vertical position needs to run to our vertical flip uh, so now we should have one lizard that flips a little bit yeah, so let's look at it a little bigger. So I can see that this lizard here is flipping, and it's when it goes to the right and left, it's incorrect. So that's our horizontal compare is incorrect, and this is our horizontal line. So I'm going to make the horizontal greater than. That should correct it. So when it goes down, it faces down. When it goes up, it faces up. When it goes left, it faces left. And when it goes right, it faces right. Okay, that sounds quite good. So now our lizard is at least orientating itself correctly. So I will close that, save update all. I'll save my file. And now you'll see that all four of these lizards are moving around uh, with orientation and kind of doing their thing correctly. So I'm pretty happy with that. And we could just keep going. We could make these lizards really cool. I, I mean, in the past, I gave each one a randomized size, different uh, scaling internally so that when they were created, some would be half the size, others would be up to double the size. So we got some variation in size. Um, you can put some smoothing in there in different ways. You can you can modify the, the animation a lot. I mean, this pulsing with a random value gets us random movement pretty easily with a smoother actor, but you could, you could put some envelope generators in there and try to get much smoother value scaling maybe put a curvature act actor on top of that to let it uh, ease in and out. Uh, there's some fun things you can do to make this much more organic and much more lifelike, I guess, in, in the way it moves around. But this, suffice to say, this is working and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the last thing I kind of wanted to show, just because it's really great fun, is that uh, this feed that we have going in here uh, yeah this feed that is our background for our color mixing 
can easily be uh, manipulated real time. This is kind of what I'm getting at. So if I add a, a video mixer after our scaling, because that just seems like a good time to do it, and I select all of these and move them to the end of our video mixer, and then give myself some space by moving that all over, make the checkerboard one of our inputs. So now you can see it's working again in the way that we've seen it previously. Oh, and you can actually, you see that these are kind of getting really bright over top of that background. That's because each one of our lizards is going to a projector that's additive. So if we switch those to transparent, you'll see that they blend in much closer because we're not doing an additive layering to the uh, background checkered. Up to you, so, you know, it may actually be that you want that additive look. It kind of gave it a more vibrant, cool looking sort of way of being, but you know. Uh, so if I switch this around so that I have access to some GLSL, I want something with a little more variance. Let me mix that into there. Right, get some pink lines. Uh, I'm going to set. I'm going to set its size to uh, match just to make my life much easier right now. Just for the video mixing elements of this, so we have this pink to blue line that's morphing back and forth. For video mixing that in to this checkerboard that we have. And if I set those to say 50%, you can see that we now have, oh, let's, you know what, let's even make that 80% just to make it really obvious that it's working. And we'll open up a stage again here. Now you can see all our lizards are pretty dark except for when they land on top of that line. And they're gonna turn pink or they're gonna turn blue according to what the background is, including this uh, GLSL shader. So what's cool about this is this shows you that it can be a live video feed that is affecting the coloration of these uh, sprites over top. What that means is that instead of a GL, uh, GLSL shader, this could be a live video feed. You could have people moving around in a space and, and causing different color effects within your video stream and the lizards on top of that then would chameleon themselves into that background color. So you can make this pretty obvious uh, again by just having it warp how it works. So now you can see the lizards are adjusting to black, they're adjusting to pink, they're adjusting to blue and all the checkerboard colors, right? The super dynamic and that's really, really quite cool. There's some really interesting effects that you can do uh, just by uh, just by creating these sort of live sprites as I kind of like to think of them. I like to think of them as live sprites. They're elements that you can drop in almost anywhere then, right? So we have this background. I'm gonna drop it onto a bunch of these. I'm gonna take our foreground, our lizard, add it to four more of these. And suddenly we have eight lizards moving around independently, changing color to our background. I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you like it. Uh, I thank you for following along with me and I hope that you, you see all many, many possibilities for using the Measure Color Actor. It's, it's a way of doing video analysis that's built into Isadora that I find to be very powerful and really interesting for creating generative uh, elements that you can stack on top of each other later and reuse and build compositions out of. Uh, so. There it is. I thank you for joining me and I wish you a fantastic day.